I'm happy this morning to introduce one of our shining stars. But Joey, I call him Joey, as I said, but he's only one example of the thousands of young people who have come to the Hilly Murphy Center and made a choice to do good in their lives and to succeed in their lives. So it's my great honor to introduce Joey Barajas, Joe the Barber, um, who's going to speak to you about his life story this morning. So thank you for everything that you've done for the United Way. Thank you for everything you've done for the Healy Murphy Center. Thank you very much. When you, when you give to the United Way, think of someone like Joe, who needs a second chance. And it's your dollars and your contributions that help, in the case of the Healy Murphy Center, young people get a second chance and become contributing members of our society. So thank you very much. Thank you. Go ahead and put this on here. I'm, I'm, I speak with my hands, so I don't want to be waving the wand around. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me here. Thank you, Doug, for, now I could call him Doug before I used to call him Dr. Watson. So now I feel like he's one of my peers. So Mr. Doug, thank you so much for uh, introducing me. And thank you, Joe. Thank you, thank you guys. Just, uh, I was just very mem mesmerized by your speech, all the things that y'all were saying, because it really touched my story. So it's a, it's a great prelude to what I have to, to share with y'all today. So yes, my name is Joe Barajas, and a lot of people used to mess up my last name, so they just started calling me Joe Barber. So that's how the name came along. So some people really think that my last name is Barber, and I was gonna legally change it, but I have five kids, then I would have to change all their last names. It's gonna get expensive. So, so I'm 37 years old, and uh, I grew up in the west side of San Antonio, the 78207 area code. And that's one of the worst areas in San Antonio as, as far as poverty. Uh, and I grew up in the projects. Uh, my father wasn't around. My mother was an alcoholic. And growing up in the projects, I thought, you know, this is where everybody grew up at. I thought it was just normal to live in the projects because all my friends lived in the projects. All the people I played basketball with live in the projects. So I thought that was normal. And um, for, for some reason, I, f I met someone in my life that was my counselor in uh, elementary school, and her name is De uh, Debbie Slaughter. She's from Dallas. Uh, she became my counselor, helped me. Uh, I grew up in a very bad environment where it was just violent all the time. Uh, a lot of gangs, a lot of drugs, a lot of murders. I, I've seen it all. I've seen people get stabbed. I've seen people get run over by a car. I've seen people get tore up by dogs. So a lot of negative and just bad violence. Uh, so because of that, uh, I started speaking to a counselor about it, you know, about my issues and what I saw what was reality and what wasn't reality. And uh, she started guiding me. So I got to see a lot of different aspects of life and not, not knowing that there was an outside of the projects. Uh, she took me out of the west side of San Antonio and took me to Alamo Heights. So I was at both ends of the spectrum. I went from being in the dirt to being in this nice house with three golden retrievers running around. Uh, I had a big yard, had a basketball court in the back had three nice cars. So I saw that and I was like, wow, like this, this is reality here for you. Like you have wooden floors, you have a fireplace. Like, so that right there was, uh, that honestly gave me aspirations. It gave me, a, it gave me hope. It gave me a, a, a desire to want to move away from my neighborhood and become something. So uh, because of that, you know, I've had God open a lot of doors in my life. So that's just one door that he opened. Uh, but after that, I still stayed in the hood. I, I went back, back to my neighborhood. I grew up with my friends still. I wanted to be around my friends because I was really close knit with them. So, but then I saw a lot of just, it's just, it was just a, a, a cycle that was just continuously violence and a lot of just negative. So I was like, man, I need to get away from this somehow. But I got caught up in it. Uh, I did go to jail one time for a traffic violation. So I'm not a you know, felon or anything like that. So y'all are cool. Um, <laughs> But, but, I, but I did, you know, experience bad stuff. I, I got in trouble as well for doing graffiti. Uh, I've been an artist all my life since I was eight years old. That was my thing. That's my gift that God gave me. And, I, and I've done a lot of, of, of art projects. I've done murals. I've done sculptures. I've done a, a lot of things. But what, what God uh, guided me to become was a barber. Uh, and as I mentioned before, I am a father of five children. My oldest son is 22 years old, then I have a 21-year-old, a 17-year-old, a 16-year-old, and a 12-year-old. My oldest son graduated from Texas A&M uh, University out in Corpus. So 
he, he did great for himself, so now he's trying to, he doesn't know if he wants to be an entrepreneur or if he wants to work for someone, so that's his right now, and entrepreneurship is not for everyone. But I, I explained to him all the rough, the, you know, the rough patches that I've gone through in my life. My second son graduated from Burbank High School, and now he wants to be in culinary school, so he's, he's trying to, you know, find his chef Ramsey, whatever he is, I don't know. <laughs> I love food, but I'm not, you know, a chef like that. So my third son, his name's Jeremy. He's a top student at Lanier High School, and he's being recruited by Rice University right now. So we're, we're working diligently to try to get him to Rice. Even though they went through the flooding, he still wants to go there. He still wants to attend that school. Uh, my other son, uh, Jordan, he goes to McCullum Middle School, and he's a 10th grader. And he's doing well, he's all AP classes, he's top 4% of his school, so he's doing well. And then my baby, well he's not a baby anymore, he's 12, he's about my height, uh, he's a basketball player. He goes to the new school that SAISD just opened up, uh, it's the advanced, it's Advanced Learning Center where Fox Tech's at, is that the correct name of it? So he goes there and he's thriving there. So because I was able to change my life, my family tree has changed significantly. significantly. Uh, it's changed everything for my family, and I never thought that that was possible. I really thought that I was going to end up just like my dad uh, in prison or somewhere, and uh, thankfully I have never been in prison, so I have to reiterate that because, man, my brother's locked up right now, so I'm his only source of income, so I have to send him monthly dues. But um, after I, I've, uh, yeah, and he's like another kid that I got to take care of, so I visit him and do all that kind of stuff. So my time, like, I, I really try to maximize my time whether it's running my business, whether it's promoting me, whether it's driving to Houston like I did last night to go do a you know, $350 haircut for some guy that's going to the Canelo fight. If y'all are boxing enthusiasts, I don't know who y'all going for, but I'm going for Canelo, so. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I, I do like, as you can see, these haircuts. I've been on TV, uh, I've been on a, a, a barber show called Cedric's Barber Battle with Cedric the Entertainer. I want $15,000, I want a belt and some clippers. Uh, I've done work for the Cowboys. I've done work for the Spurs organization. I flew out to New York City, and I did some work with the Rangers, and I was on a commercial that they were running on TV. I was in Madison Square Garden. I've flown to every major city in the United States. I've been to Mexico City. I cut the national players from Mexico. Uh, I've also been to Toronto. Uh, I've done so much with barbering, and I don't know if y'all know, but it's a billion-dollar you know, industry right now. I've cut some, some basketball players, I've cut football players, I've cut rap artists that I look up to. Uh, Lecrae and Andy Minio are good friends of mine, and now they're you know, blowing up in the mainstream, so just to be able to know that I can just pick up the phone and call them is like something in itself to me. But uh, I know a lot of the top barbers in the country that cut all, you know, all, the, all the big stars, you know, Puff Daddy and, and all, Cam Newton and all them, all the football players. I know a lot of barbers because I've been traveling so much. But um, back to, I just want to mention that because going to Healy Murphy, Healy Murphy provided a second chance and none of this stuff would have been possible in my, in my eyes. I don't think any of this would have been possible if United Way wasn't there funding Healy Murphy. I went to Healy Murphy after I got kicked out of schools. Uh, I got in a lot of fights. People didn't like me just because I was from a different neighborhood. And back then, that's, it was like, why are we fighting for the projects that does not belong to us? We don't pay taxes. They don't cut our grass, you know. <laughs> So as I got older, I started seeing like, oh my goodness, like we're killing each other for a neighborhood that's, you know, a impoverished area and we're fighting for something that's really not ours. So I, I realized that and once I got out of that, I got kicked out of school. Uh, I went to Lanier High School, then I went to Roosevelt High School. After I got kicked out of Roosevelt, I was like, well, am I gonna just get my GED or what am I gonna do? Uh, my, my dream was to be a basketball player. I, I really thought I was gonna make it to the NBA, but I'm 5'10 and I'm Mexican, so. <laughs> It's very hard, you know, I didn't, I didn't have anyone to look up to, so uh, I was like, well, you know, I'm an artist, so I gotta find out what I'm gonna do with my talent. Uh, but I did start cutting hair at 12 years old, and that's when everything just came together. Um, at Healy Murphy, they had smaller classes, and they allowed me to be myself. I've always wanted to be someone that was educated. I wanted to strive to be a smart person, as you can say, but in, in my neighborhood, if you were viewed as a smart person, you were not you know, part of the crew, because everybody was a knucklehead. If you don't do what we do, then we're gonna turn on you, and then you're not part of the crew. So that's how I grew up, and um, 
that helped sometimes with loyalty because I'm very big on loyalty. But then I realized, like, I'm not a fool. If you jump over the bridge, I'm going to cross across the bridge and go, you know. You can jump if you want. I'm going to do what's right for me and what's right, just period. Uh, but being at Hilly Murphy, I, I really got to thrive there. I really got to interact with the teachers, and, and I, I met my wife there. So we grew up together, and, and we were together for a long time. And uh, just raising our kids and doing all that I, w wouldn't be possible, you know what I mean? So it's very important for me to share y'all with y'all this story of how I came and, and, and to knowing Healy Murphy. And now I always make time for Healy Murphy. Healy Murphy is a part of my heart and a part of my life. And none of this would have been possible, you know? And I could, you could go and look me up, the Joe Barber, and you could see all the, the crazy stuff that I'd done. Uh, but it, it all stems back to somebody was able to give to United Way. United Way was able to, to provide Healy Murphy with the finances to reach people like me. And now you could say I'm a diamond in the rough or whatever, but there's a lot of diamonds out there. And we just need some people to go dig them up. You know what I mean? So that's all, all I want to share is the story of, of perseverance is something that people have to learn. You have to go through stuff. And now I appreciate everything I have. I have my, my shop. I have 10 barber chairs in there. I have, right now I have currently eight barbers that are working with me. Uh, I make good money, I travel, and I'm, I'm happy in my life, just period. But I always find time to give uh, whatever I can to my old neighborhood. I still go back to the west side. I run a basketball program there for other kids that are at risk. And I try to give as much as I can. I give to my barbers. I share my story with them and let them know, like, whatever you want, you can have. But it's just going to take hard work. No matter where you come from, no matter what you do, there's no substitute for hard work. I don't care where you come from. If you grew up in Alamo Heights or not, you still got to work hard to get where you want to be. And I'm just one of the people at Healy Murphy that's come out of there to be able to succeed in life. And I still have aspirations to do so much more in my life. And it's not always about the financial. Of course, that helps because I have five kids, like I said, so I got to take care of them. They want cars, iPads, and iPhones that are $1,000. Like, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> I'm like, you know, you got to start cutting some hair if you want that phone. But <laughs> none of them want to cut hair. But uh, I, I love Healy Murphy, and I love you guys. Thank you so much for taking time to, you know, be respectful and just hearing me out because you do make a difference. Whether you give five, whether you give a, a $1,000, it makes a difference. It really does. And I just wanted to be an example of, of what, you can, what you can contribute to. So thank you so much, guys, and, and God bless.